In today's news, federal prosecutors and defense attorneys returned to courtroom today over jurors backtracking in the Andrew Foy trial. BVIOC renames elite athlete program in honor of Harrigan Scott. Honorable Walwyn presses government on strategies to increase overnight visitors. The League of British Virgin Islanders honors five in annual scholarship luncheon. We have the details of this and so much more when 284 News returns. He hit me. Will CG cover this? Don't worry. Remember when I was in that competitive arm wrestling circuit? Ah! Three time champion, baby. I did feel bad crushing all those arms and dreams. So I took them all out for ice cream. And then we got crushed. <laughs> anyway, CG handled my claims fast. That explains the arm. The best cover for the best value. CG Insurance. Good like that. Start the year off with more. More speed, more downloading, more savings, and more FIA. CCT FIA Fiber Internet gives you the speed you need to keep the whole family connected. Packages starting at $119 with speeds from 300 megabytes per second. Super fast, unlimited downloads, even more reliable connectivity, plus free live streaming TV for the family to enjoy. Sign up for the absolute best fiber internet service in the BVI, CCT FIA, and pay no installation fee. Plus, get CCT Live TV for free. You deserve more. Get more with CCT. Life Unlimited. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of 284 News. It is Thursday, March 7th, 2024. I'm Ron Grant, bringing you the very latest out of Tortola in the Virgin Islands. Thank you so much for joining us. A happy Thursday's wish to each and every one of you. Beginning our newscast. We are following, of course, today, March 7th, 2024, in Florida, USA. Federal prosecutors and defense attorneys were expected to return to the court to seek to resolve post-trial backtracking by jurors in the trial against former BVI Premier Andrew A. Foy. Foy, who remains in custody, was scheduled to be sentenced on April 29, 2024, after he was convicted by a 12-member jury on February 8th on charges of conspiracy to import a controlled substance, conspiracy to engage in money laundering, attempted money laundering, and interstate and foreign travel in aid of racketeering. The trial lasted eight days, and in a very peculiar turn of events, two of the jurors, a man and a woman, contacted the judge shortly after to say that they did not actually agree with all of the guilty verdicts. This despite the fact that the jury had already been polled in court and their decision and discharge from duty. Now, this presents a rare predicament. Can jury verdicts stand if members later recant on their record position? Here, the report by court reporter Jay Weaver, legal experts say general, generally sorry, verdicts cannot be revisited post-discharge unless external pressure was applied or racism was somehow involved in a way that would have been unfair to defendant. Neither is believed to have applied in this case. Judge Kathleen Williams has expressed frustration over findings a legal basis to resolve the verdict problem, and she called their discussions meaningful. But she pressed both sides to continue examining post cases in South Florida and around the country to help her reach a just resolution. Foy wrote to the court asking for it to determine whether jurors gave, and I quote, their verdicts. Now, viewers, at the time of our newscast, we were not able to confirm what the verdict is in the sitting today. However, some media houses have reported that the verdict stands and Foy remains guilty on all charges and is expected to be sentenced in April. Again, up until our time of recording, we were not able to confirm this. We'll keep you posted as the details become available. The government was recently pressed on its plans to increase the number of overnight visitors to the territory. As member of the 6th District, the Honorable Myron Walwyn added his voice to concerns about the increasing market share of cruise ship tourism in the BVI. Take a look at this report. After asking that Premier Honorable Dr. Natalia Wheatley present figures on cruise ship visitors and overnight visitors to the territory over the past several years, member for the 6th District, the Honorable Myron Walwyn, pressed the government on its plans to increase the number of overnight visitors to the territory. 
despite 2023 being a near record-breaking year for visitor arrivals in the BVI, the figures represented a significant shift in visitor patterns. Warwin joins members of the public and tourism practitioners across the territory who have expressed discontent with the trajectory of the BVI's tourism product as the cruise ship industry increases its market share. Following announcements by the government of the Virgin Islands that the territory recorded its second highest number of visitor arrivals ever in 2023, members of the public were disheartened by the fact that cruise ship visitors accounted for over 70% of the total. It was later confirmed that 2023 was a record-breaking year for cruise ship arrivals in the BVI. Noting that overnight visitors contribute the most significantly to the economy, Walwyn questioned the government's plan to increase overnight stays. He also inquired about the strategy in place to extract value from the cruise ship industry. And, and Madam Speaker, the Premier would know, as he indicated, that tourism is not really rocket science. He, he would know that from 2018, as he indicated, his overnight visitors was for three, 335,000. Uh, in about 2016 or so, they were, they were about 400,000, a little over 400,000. And you would know that most of the business, in terms of contribution to the economy, really comes through the overnight visitors. Um, but the numbers are down, were down in 2023, to about well, less, less than 100,000 off from where you were 2018. What is the plan? to strengthen the numbers uh, in terms of overnight visitors, one. And two, in terms of cruise ship passengers, Madam Speaker, if the Premier could tell me uh, which ships uh, are particularly being targeted um, as, as ships that we want to come to the shores, because every ship is not a ship. There are some ships, you know, when they're coming, you can put on your pot. When it have other ships coming in, don't even bother. While acknowledging that overnight visitors do indeed have the most spending and make the most significant economic contributions of all visitor types, the Premier stressed that cruise ship visitors are still valuable. He noted that the government's working model centers around converting cruise ship guests to overnight visitors. And he is correct, the uh, overnight guests um, spend more and contribute more to our economy, but it doesn't mean, of course, that we don't value those persons who come as cruise passengers who uh, really help to support um, a lot of individuals, especially those persons who are taxi drivers, um, those persons who um, have businesses on beaches. You have King Garden Bay, you have Long Bay, um, and you have you know, businesses at the pair pack who are able to benefit from uh, cruise passengers and other businesses around Rotown Town and other places where cruise passengers frequent. And a part of what we, we have been doing and, and what we want to do more of is converting those cruise ship passengers into overnight guests. And I was quite pleased in conversation with some of our tourism stalwarts up to last night on specific plans to help convert uh, cruise ship passengers to overnight guests. As it pertains to increasing the numbers, yes, we want to get back up to that 400,000 uh, number. That is our goal. The Premier said that he anticipates achieving this goal within the next few years, aided by key developments coming on stream to increase the number of available beds in the BVI. Uh, for instance, Peter Island is going to be coming back on stream. Uh, that's going to have an impact. Uh, we have, uh, as I said before, we just um, constituted the Board for Prospect Reef. And we're going to be very aggressive about get, getting a request for proposal out that will add more beds with a, uh, uh, a request for proposal for a branded five-star uh, property. Uh, we continue to uh, work with uh, places like Naniki, who's going to be breaking ground in a couple months on an expanded facility, a, a really fantastic uh, 
expansion which is about to take place down in Naniki, catering to the mega yacht facilities and adding more, adding more beds. Uh, we continue to have very positive dialogues on Norman Island. Um, we see uh, increased expansion at uh, Lambert, uh, Wyndham Lambert. Uh, we have a development that's about to go forward. I'm about to sign a development agreement um, at Port Purcell um, for Joma Properties. Um, that's going to add beds as well. Premier Wheatley noted further that other developments are in the pipeline at various stages of planning. Those initiatives, he said, hold great promise to contribute significantly to the BVI's tourism product. With that, the Premier said he is encouraged that overnight visitor numbers could grow back to levels seen before the 2017 hurricanes and beyond. While welcoming the developments to come, Walwyn argued that the developments mentioned by the Premier reflected the efforts of private property owners rather than the plans of the government, which he requested. But from my knowledge, I know that many of the new developments that have taken place, it is of the, of the, it of the volition of the owners of those establishments to move forward those things. I want to see, Madam Speaker, and the Premier can tell me what is this government doing from your own perspective? When you read the newspapers, Madam Speaker, you see, for instance, in Antigua, there's stuff happening all the time. You see in St. Kitts, the Ritz Carlton is opening. You see that that sprawling sandals development that is happening in St. Vincent and the Grenadines right now. Yeah. Premier, you travel a lot. You go away a lot and a lot, a lot. Your budget for travel is $2.9 million. What, what are you bringing home? Because you seem to be coming home, Premier, empty-handed whenever you go away. And these developments that you're talking about, you, don't have, you have nothing to do with those. Most of them, you, you come into the office and met those there. They were starting with Orlando, with Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith had office. And even to say that we went after some of them, may not necessarily be true in all of them, but in many cases, people of their own volition did that. What aggressive measures are you taking, Premier? to bring new business to the territory. That, that is what I'm interested in hearing. And the people want to know, particularly those people who have invested millions of dollars in the economy of the country. In an interrupted response, Premier Weasley shared that the government's plans for the tourism sector focus primarily on fostering an environment for investment. He shared that in his experience as Minister for Tourism, investors have been interested in the BVI, but frustrated by the processes. He said that the government's plan is to streamline the necessary processes and provide incentives to investors. He also noted that efforts to increase air travel, such as the return of American Airlines, have been impactful. The move that we have made with American Airlines coming directly to the BVI in itself has sent a very strong message to developers that we're serious about development because one of the biggest challenges and biggest hindrances to the growth of our tourism sector has been airlift and um, i would say I'm, I'm, I'm proud of this administration and i'm proud of the minister of communications and works and the leadership role he's played in helping us to expand our airlift and when we extend that runway so that we can get flights from New York and Atlanta and North Carolina. That will be the biggest factor. I mean, and, it, and it's amazing that persons want to invest in the BVI even without that. Um, but that will be the biggest factor that will help the persons uh, to, to have the confidence in building properties in the Virgin Islands because you can't build a 200, 300 room property and you don't know how you're going to get the airlift to get the people, people there. The Premier stressed that efforts continue to attract investors to the BVI. Jaka Wooding to it for news. Viewers up next, we have more on the local scene. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Father Jesus, that loin you along like church so is. Hmm. Alright, do you enjoy the rest of the day? Next customer line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yeah. 
Yes, sonny boy, come, yes, sonny. Good morning, sonny boy. You must stop cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay, I'll take care of you. What? No, no man, protect you. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. <laughs> you want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Huh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You want top of power? Across the BVI, the fastest, most reliable, and affordable fiber internet service is here for you. Look out for fire in these new locations. Slaney, Duff Bottom, Manual Reef, Sea Cows Bay, Albion, Hannah's, Palestina, Pleasant Valley, and Havers. Fiber is in your area. Call 444-4444 or visit a CCT store to find out more and bring it home. More locations coming soon. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you so much for sticking with us. The League of British Virgin Islanders based in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands has honored five individuals who have contributed to the fabric of their societies, particularly in the British Virgin Islands and U.S. Virgin Islands. The honorees at the annual Dr. Norrell E. Harrigan Memorial Scholarship Luncheon held in St. Thomas, United States Virgin Islands took place on Sunday, March 3rd, 2024. The 2024 honorees included Mr. Aaron F. Parallon, Ms. Janice Stout, Esquire, Ms. Marjorie Smith, Mr. Clayton Emanuel, and Mr. Carvin Malone, the late Carvin Malone. The League of British Virgin Islanders is a non-for-profit organization whose purpose is to build on the strong ties of the BVI and USVI through a scholarship fund named in honor of Dr. Norwell Harrigan. Their aim is to seek to build and improve the island's community through scholarship, cultural exchange, and community involvement, and was founded by a group of like-minded visionaries to bring the British Virgin Islands and belongers, both in the BVI and USVI, together. Attendees of the event included BVI and USVI legislators and dignitaries. The BVI delegation, led by Premier and Minister of Finance Dr. The Honorable Natalia D. Wheatley, included Minister for Health and Social Development, the Honorable Vincent O. Wheatley, Minister for Communications and Works, the Honorable Kai M. Reimer, Junior Minister for Agriculture and Fisheries, the Honorable Carl Dawson, and Junior Minister for Tourism and Culture, the Honorable Luce D. Hodge Smith. The League offers community assistance and prove assistance to Virgin Islanders through education. The Norrell Harrigan Memorial Scholarship was established in memory of Dr. Norrell Harrigan. The scholarship offers financial assistance for two years to British Virgin Islanders who have graduated from a secondary school of the British Virgin Islands or the H. Lively Stout Community College to attend the University of the Virgin Islands. Director of the League, Mr. Molito A. Smith Jr. spoke on the success of the event along with its overall aim. Greetings, I am Molito A. Smith Jr president of the League of BVI Landers. The League's mission is to foster community improvement through scholarship, cultural exchange, and community involvement. We connect persons of BVI heritage to strengthen our community ties. We are completely volunteer run and have been in existence since 1988. For the past two decades, we have provided annual scholarships to students of BVI heritage attending the University of the Virgin Islands. The Dr. Norwell E. Harrigan Memorial Scholarship Luncheon is our annual major scholarship fundraiser for the Dr. Norwell E. Harrigan Memorial Scholarship. This year's theme was sustaining our ties to fortify our communities. The distinguished honorees for this year's event were Mr. Aaron Parallon, entrepreneur, educator, and community advocate. Ms. Janice Stout Esquire, attorney, community advocate, and culture bearer. Ms. Marjorie Smith, businesswoman, boat captain, and marine industry leader. Mr. Clayton W. Emanuel, retired educator, world-class musician, and community advocate. And Mr. Carvin Malone, entrepreneur, 
community advocate and former Minister of Health and Social Development. Mr. Carmen Malone was slated to be honored prior to his untimely passing. The League, in consultation with the Malone family, found it most fitting to recognize him posthumously for his lifetime of work and commitment. The scholarship recipient is Mr. Jamari Elijah Sargent, a double major marine biology and applied mathematics student at the University of the Virgin Islands. Best wishes as he continues his academic and career pursuits. As our communities navigate the ever-changing global, regional, and local landscapes, we are reminded of the importance of sustaining our ties to fortify our communities. Thank you to everyone whose support made our March 3rd, 19th Dr. Norwell E. Harrigan Memorial Scholarship Luncheon an overwhelming success. Viewers, up next we have more on the local scene. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Uh, Angie, how can I get my claims paid quick? Rent's due next week. CG processes 99% of claims within five days. Remember when I was hang on with those goats? I caught a gust of wind and flew right into a movie car. Every appendage was in the cast. And they paid fast and fairly. That's what I get for trusting a man with a mustache and an eye patch. Now I gotta go. I'm meeting the guy who bedazzled my toes. 99% of claims are processed within five days. CG Insurance. Good like that. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you so much for sticking with us. Continuing on on the local scene in the Virgin Islands, the BVI Olympic Committee has renamed its Elite Athlete Scholarship Program in honor of three-time Olympian Tahisha Harrigan-Scott. Our Kamal Haynes has this report. President of the BVI Olympic Committee, Ephraim Pan, made the announcement of the renaming of the Elite Athlete Scholarship Program in honor of Olympian Tahisha Harrigan-Scott. During a press conference at the committee's office at the Prospect Reef Plaza on Tuesday, Penn highlighted several of the track and field achievements attained by Harrigan Scott during her illustrious career as an athlete, having set numerous records on and off the track as the first BVI female athlete to accomplish numerous feats. Harrigan Scott, recipient of the BVI Athletics Lifetime Achievement Award in 2019 following her retirement from athletics, is also the first female BVI athlete to win a senior international medal and the first to attain a world championship qualifying mark. They're the first again, she was the BVI first female athlete to win a gold medal at the International Games with a victory in 100 meters at the 2006 Central American and Caribbean Games in Cartagena, Colombia. She went on to repeat that feat in 2010 in Puerto Rico, Mayaguez CAC champion once again. And in the middle there, she won the CAC Senior Championship in 100 meters in 2019. But Taisha's most significant accomplishment, however, was winning a bronze medal at the IAAF, the then IAAF World Indoor Championship in the 60 meter dash in 2008 with a time of 7.09 seconds to set the women's indoor national record in that event. She was also a finalist at the 2007 Pan American Games, placing fourth in 100 meter in Brazil. A three-time Olympian, Taisha was the first female to represent the territory in track and field at the Olympic Games. Currently the chef de mission for the upcoming Olympic Games in Paris, Harrigan Scott said she is honored to have her name attached to the program, especially as the first beneficiary herself. Um, as a former beneficiary myself, I understand firsthand the impact and significance of this program and for our continuing aspiring athletes. Um, this, this initiative not only propels, propels my journey, but it promises to be a beacon of support for countless other athletes who are striving to make their mark in the world of sport. Um, the BBIOC has not only recognized my effort in this endeavor, but they've also extended its commitment in leveling the playing fields for all our athletes, allowing them to compete on an equal ground and realize their full potential, which we are witnessing first half. Um, one cannot really overlook the financial challenges that our, our athletes often face because they've you know, expressed it on numerous occasions. And 
in their pursuit of their excellence, of course, there's a lot of burden or finances that accompany it. So this program also helps alleviate that burden that the athletes may feel and ensure that their financial constraints do not impede their realization of their goals. She also expressed gratitude to the businesses which contributed more than $30,000 towards the program, taking available some of the fund over the $230,000 mark. The three local key sponsor businesses included Clarence Thomas Limited, DLT Solutions, and Conyers, while Guana Islands, Crab Island, and Republic Bank were also listed as sponsors. I commend you and being a part of this pivotal role of shaping our future athletes. I would urge members of other members or other private sectors to, you know, join in this initiative, this noble initiative, and to continue the process of greatness and in producing greatness in the British Virgin Islands because we see what our athletes can do. Um, I, I say this with passion because when you go on a, when you watch TV or you, you're at the arena and you realize and you see our athletes doing big things or they overlook them or they're the big three but then they don't they're not recognized as the big three and they go out there and they stump on people's head but it's 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 a great thing for them to push their way into a conversation during the press conference on Tuesday, it was also announced that a committee will be established to provide a more transparent process of how the program's funds are managed, which will include sponsors and members of various sporting associations and federations as committee members. President Penn spoke on the existing process of how athletes are selected to benefit from the program. There's a process that goes every quadrennial. Um, Olympic Solidarity would um, tell us how much money is available for scholarships for, say, for now it will be Los Angeles 20, 2028. So we will then reach out to all our national federations to say that, can you please give us the names of your top athletes who you think can qualify for the Olympics. Once we receive those names, we send them off to Olympic Solidarity. Olympic Solidarity then send them off to each individual international federation of that sport so that to, to ascertain that this person has the ability in their field to reach a certain level. And once that goes back to Olympic Solidarity recommendations, they then write to us and say, well, you've given us 15 names, six have qualified. So they then form the basis of the distribution. President of the BVI Athletics Association, Steve Augustine, said he was pleased to see the increased support of corporate BVI to local athletes. I am truly happy to see, to realize, and to live the moment when we can physically see support coming from the private sector. Not to say that we haven't been supported by the private sector over the years, but I'm truly happy to see that we have some new names that are coming up, and coming up in a bold way to support sports, because it's much more than just athletics. Um, to you guys, again, um, I say thanks. And when I say thanks, I say thanks on behalf of our athletes, on behalf of the parents of those athletes who continuously support um, their children and their dreams and aspirations. I say so on behalf of the coaches that support these athletes to help them to live their dreams. I say so on behalf of the supporters, the fans, and everyone in between to ensure that I don't leave anyone out. But it's definitely a, a joyful experience to be here this morning and to witness history um, being made. Meanwhile, Olympian, two-time Commonwealth Games champion, and World Athletic Silver Medalist,
Kyron McMaster is the only BVI athlete to have qualified for the 2024 Paris Olympic Games so far. McMaster tuned in briefly to the press conference to deliver remarks during one of his training sessions and expressed his gratitude for the support of corporate BVI. I'd like to thank the BVI for seeing. Hey, how you doing? I'd like to thank the BVFOC and everyone that contributed um, funds to help us to, to reach our goals for 2024. I, I myself, and I surely could speak out of us when I say it. everyone who is benefiting from this program, thank you tremendously because the, the, the saying it takes a village to raise one. It's the same thing with the BBI. I look at that all around. We are not as big as the world that we go up against. Uh, USA, Germany, Belgium, or whatever the case is. We are a small island, just a little dot, trying to make waves in a small ocean. A little fish trying to take on a wave. So, um, with the support we got that we're getting from the OC, with the funding, um, that helps tremendously, that helps move mountains that you guys couldn't imagine. Reporting for Tweet for News, I am Kamal Haynes. Viewers, that is it for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for your daily news updates at 284media.com. And of course, like us on Facebook at 284BVI and 284BVI on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Ron Grant. I'll see you again tomorrow. Do have a safe and enjoyable evening. Be sure to stick to our uh, website and of course our social media handles for the number of feature interviews that take place at 284media. Happy Thursday, everyone. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. Goodbye.